Welcome back to youtube.com slash geekloud. Today we're doing our monthly uh, wrap up of the games releasing on PlayStation Plus, the deluxe and extra levels. I'm Bully and uh, let's jump into it. So if we have a look at uh, the games for March, best way to do this, sort by recently added. And you can see there we've got a couple of new ones added to the list. So we've got Untitled Goose Game there. Not sure if anybody's played that. I've uh, probably put a little bit of time into it. It's a uh, um, funny sort of game. Um, didn't really uh, hook me, to be honest with you. We've got Rainbow Six Extraction, which I've played Rainbow Six. I haven't played Extraction, but that's uh, a different take on it for the Rainbow Six formula there. As you can see some of the gameplay there, but it, uh, it still retains some of that God Shooter, uh, sorry, Squad Shooter, not God Shooter, Squad Shooter. Um, but it has, uh, as you can see, play alone or with friends in any platform in this one to three PVE FPS. So, a bit of a different take on the Rainbow Six formula. Life is Strange 2, haven't played this particular one, but uh, certainly played Life is Strange, the first one. Really good uh, interactive uh, story with a branching sort of storyline, depending on uh, your choices as you make your way through it. Bit of a different art style as well on that one. From Square Enix, you have got Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Uh, I have played a little bit of this one. And again, this is um, in terms of a Dragon Ball sort of game, it's a bit of an open world uh, RPG style game. Um, but as I said, I haven't put a lot of time into that one. So, and then you've got uh, Final Fantasy Type Zero HD, which is a uh, port or a uh, re <coughs> redone version of uh, a PSP game from back in the day. A bit of an action RPG on that one. Uh, if you've got uh, fans of the Final Fantasy selection of games there, you've got... Uh, we'll jump across those as soon as we do Life is Strange Life is Strange True Colors so a bit of a spin off of uh, one of those there Rage 2 um, that we've got there so that is um, open world shooter basically um, set in sort of post apocalyptic world and it's uh, there were some detractors when it first came out I've, I've probably put uh, maybe 10 or 15 hours into it and I actually don't mind it it's a bit uh Bit of fun, bit of uh, bit of nonsense. It's sort of got that borderline, uh, Borderlands style uh, to it as well. But um, it's actually not a bad game, to be honest with you. Uh, Haven. I haven't seen anything like that, but uh, anything about that. But it's uh, looks like a, a Japanese anime style um, graphical style that you've got there and um, yeah, be interesting to check out that one uh, you've got uh, this one I have put a bit of time into it is uh, Neo The World Ends With You um, probably about an hour or two into it and it's um, it gives you the sort of Persona vibes a little bit um, for anybody who is into the Persona game so not a bad one to check out there it does have uh, sort of action RPG elements to the fighting style um, and you're basically wandering around uh, a Japanese city uh, where you essentially there's a undercurrent of a game I guess um, that most of the occupants of the city can't see so a bit of a different one there Code Vein <clears throat> as well that's uh, it's almost like a, an anime take on the Soulsborne type games. 
uh, there, bit, bit of a different uh, look to it. Uh, it does uh, have season pass, etc. that comes with it. I haven't checked out the season pass, but I have put a couple of hours into the game itself. And it's actually not a bad uh, take on it all. You've got Immortals Phoenix Rising, which is a Ubisoft title game. So anybody that's played Assassin's Creed and that sort of uh, style of game will know exactly what this one is all about in terms of uh, the gameplay. And it's set in ancient Greece with uh, the gods and... Uh, you're sort of helping them out. It's actually got, uh, if you go into it, you can actually see it's got a, quite a interesting style of uh, artwork and graphical style to it. And it does have a number of uh, DLC uh, options as well with extra quests. I really enjoyed it, played it through to the end. Probably put 30 or 40 hours into it. Uh, didn't complete everything, but uh, it was really enjoyable for what it was. I got that when it first uh, came out on the PS5 Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection, which has Uncharted 4 and also has uh, Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which was originally supposed to be a DLC for Uncharted 4, uh, but fleshed out the game a lot more than uh, just a bit of DLC and turned it into quite an, uh, an uh, excellent uh, story in and of itself with uh, two different characters. You don't play as Nate in that one, but uh, certainly it's got a lot of the same uh, gameplay elements and story elements that you would see in the mainline Uncharted series. So that's, if you haven't played any of those, it's certainly well worth it uh, and uh, re-released for the PS5. You've got Ghostwire Tokyo. <clears throat> it's a bit of a strange one, Ghostwire Tokyo, to be honest with you. Um, I'd probably put an hour into it to start with and didn't really enjoy it, just the movement. But I found if you uh, if you tweak the control settings um, so that uh, the aiming stick, the right stick, actually moves um, a bit quicker, it does make a, a heck of a difference to the gameplay itself. Real interesting game. You're set uh, basically in a Japanese town, city, where pretty much... Um, there is nobody left in the city and you're, in essence, um, fighting against a bunch of ghosts and what's in Tokyo that you can see there, overrun by supernatural forces. Um, really enjoyable game once you get into it and a great uh, storyline if you play it through all the way to the end. I have, it's fantastic. Um, you know, working your way around essentially an open world of Tokyo um, with those supernatural type elements to it, we've got uh, Street Fighter, <coughs> Street Fighter Five, I should say. Um, not a big fighting fan, so I couldn't tell you much about this one, um, as into the differences between uh, you know four and five and how this one plays. Um, and the last one, which was a day and date release for. The PS Plus service there was uh, Chia. So, um, as you can see on the screen there, a game inspired by New Caledonia, which is uh, an island set in the Pacific Ocean, uh, not far off the coast of Australia, where we are. It's uh, put uh, maybe uh, two hours into this one, and it's uh, it looks fantastic. You can see from the... Uh, some of the art style there in the background it does really have some uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild style uh, uh, graphical style to it and even some of the gameplay settings um, that uh, sort of work their way through it it has um, you know you can see back on uh, one of these original ones you can see it's got a little uh, parachute type thing that you can sort of sail around the world around the world with a la breath of the wild but uh really interesting game really uh interesting setting and it does have some of those same mechanics so you've got your stamina meter in terms of climbing up um cliffs and swimming and that sort of stuff so the basic premise is that uh you, you're setting off to go off and find your dad so if you um 
if you want to know a bit more about that one, uh, if you check out uh, on this channel, uh, youtube.com slash geekalad uh, on GEA, the Gaming Enforcement Agency. That's the podcast we do each and every week. And uh, it's myself, Troy and Unky Dunky, where we discuss the games we have been playing for the week. And this was certainly one that Unky Dunky spoke about in terms of... Uh, uh, he'd put a, a bit of time into it before the show last week and uh, rated it very highly from what he'd seen so far. And uh, if you check out the channel as well, you can see that uh, Troy did a uh, install of that as well. Going into the Classics cl- catalogue, you've got uh, Siphon Filter Dark Mirror. Now, this came out on the PSP and the PS2, but I think, as is to my understanding, this is the PSP version uh, of it, which is another questionable decision. I would have thought. I th- would have thought the better version of it was a PS2 one, but uh, there you go. Uh, Ape Academy Two. Um, I haven't put any time to this one, but another PSP game. Now, my understanding is this one that wasn't actually released in the US originally uh, when it came out on the PSP. So. Uh, if you're from the Americas, uh, you can check that one out. It's a series of mini games, essentially, uh, as you can sort of see on the screen there. And we move across to Ridge Racer 4. So this is the second Ridge Racer that we have got for the Classics uh, section of uh, PS Plus there. And we'll just go back into that. I'm not sure if that's the PSP version as well. Um doesn't say there whether it's the PSP version but certainly uh, if that takes your interest and then uh, the PlayStation Hits version of The Last of Us it's not the remastered version oh sorry it's the remastered as in it's the remaster of the PS3 to the PS4 but it's not the one that was released as uh, retitle as part one uh, onto the PS5 last year, so if you haven't played that, you've uh, been enjoying the HBO series, which is now wrapped up its first season. Certainly, uh, not a bad one to look into, and we'll see just uh, some of the uh, game trolls there as well. Sonic Frontiers, Unreal, Dreamlight Valley, Bonfire Peaks, and God of War Ragnarok, which I think some of those have been there for a little while but certainly uh, in terms of the selections there uh, my choice if you're going to go through any of those on the recently added ones uh, Chia certainly looks interesting as a new game Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection is a must play if you haven't played any of the Uncharted 4 or the Lost Legacy, I should say. Uh, that's a must play. A couple of other notable ones there, which I really enjoyed playing through, were Ghostwire, Tokyo, and Immortals Phoenix Rising. So that's a bit of a wrap up for the March releases on the PS Plus service. And uh, certainly uh, we may uh, be discussing Chia a little bit further, as I said, on GEA this week. That's Thursday, 8 pm Australian time. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this, uh, make sure that you check out some of the other videos on the channel. We're releasing updates uh, fairly regularly um, and almost daily, so um, or multiple times a day we're releasing uh, videos there. So um, jump on and check it out. And uh, what else can you do with the channel? You can like it, you can subscribe it, and you'll never miss it. Yeah. <laughs>